Um, so my name is John Wynn. Uh, I handle the Intel products at Penguin Computing um, about two months in. Um, and Alice is my colleague in the back. Uh, he can answer any questions about the Arctica switch or the, uh, the Intel OP switch if you have any questions afterwards. Um, so today, I'll be speaking about standardizing power supply modules and 19 inch equipment in the compute rack. Um, kind of a case study of what we found during the development of our Tundra ES product. So we'll be talking a little bit about Penguin, uh, why we care about OSB standards. Uh, talk a little bit about how the OSB HPC cluster came about, uh, the need for more power supply options, what we found out during the development, uh, as well as the switches that are in the uh, OCP rack and the Arctica product line, uh, and speak a little bit about some of the, um, the follow-up that we have after that. So Penguin uh, is a 20-year-old company that is a global provider for HPC hardware, um, software, and services. We're also home to the skilled Beowulf cluster management software. Uh, it's a free software you can use to manage your clusters, as well as uh, bare metal HPC on cloud, what we call Penguin On Demand, or POD. Um, we also have delivered over 300 OSB racks to date, based on the Tundra ES design, uh, which I'd like to note, uh, because the chairman asked me about this, and also Steve, is. Uh, the extreme scale design is up for discussion in Q2 by the incubation committee. And also, we're a Platinum OCB member. Very proud to mention that. Uh, we do bear the logo. It's on the top right. And the Penguin CTO, Philip Corney, is actually a member of the incubation committee. That shows our commitment to OCP. So about the OCP HPC cluster. So we had a client that came about, and they said they, they wanted to have an OCP-based HPC cluster. At that time, we didn't have one. We had to create one from scratch. And that's actually the cluster on the right-hand side in the picture. This is the Tundra Extreme Scale, or Tundra ES uh, product, which is a 1OU form factor, three-node compute, and it leverages the V1 rack design. So what we found during the development is that we didn't have the power supply we needed. Um, there's only DC power. There's no AC courtesy plugs available. Uh, we tried to look at off-the-shelf top, top rack, and we found out they don't work in OCB design. There wasn't anything adaptable in the marketplace at that time. It was pretty early. Uh, it was a couple years back. So we had a couple things to think about. Did we want to create a, another rack, uh, another segment for the 19 is just for network, or do we want to create an Angus rack kind of design? So an Angus rack for us is a hybrid rack. On the top, you can convert to 19 inch, and the bottom would be another switch or some other piece of equipment. But if we do that, then we lose half the density. So we said, okay, you know, let, let's not do that. And as many of you know, you know, when you, you work in the lab, things happen. So we had a DC to AC inverter kind of design, and well, the, the smell of burning ceramic is something you don't forget. <laughs> so about the switches, so here's one of them. We have two. Uh, one was the Intel OmniPath 100. And you can see on the left-hand side and the right-hand side, it's before and after pictures. We had to, let's see if I can use a laser pointer here. Um, we had to take out these, uh, these power module boards and replace them with a direct connect. It's a, new, it's a 12 volt passer, basically. So this wasn't available. We had to do this on a scratch, and we had to figure it out for a while. And the same thing with the Arctica. So you can see here that it's a, uh, a fixed module design here on the 4804 IP versus the 4806 XP 10G switch. And this is the power supply module on the top which is also a 12-volt DC modular power supply, and it goes inside the chassis. Of course, these things didn't exist. We had to make these from scratch. So about the components that are not in the OSB marketplace, so this is what we're talking about. Um, we wish there were more components available. Um, we tried to look at a lot of uh, off-the-shelf switches, and unfortunately, uh, it just didn't work out for us because, again, like I said, it's, you either have to adapt it or you lose the density or I had to create uh, some other hybrid uh, off-the-shelf rack just to fit all these network switches. And one thing we're asking of everybody here is that, and as well as the committee, is can we talk about standardization so we can allow more off-the-shelf racks, uh, off-the-shelf switches to fit inside the rack. And at the same time, you know, as a product manager, um, I like standards because it makes it a lot easier to design for things. So when we say productization requires standardization, meaning that uh, it is possible to cost-effectively productize. Uh, Penguin has proof of that. Uh, we did that with the OPS switch. We did that with the Arctica switch. Um, 
but we also ask if you could standardize these things so that we could more easily take off-the-shelf components and put them into the marketplace or into our designs. All right, so that's it. Um, any questions? No? Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. So I've seen a lot of the reference designs um, you know, available as, as specs on the site. I haven't seen anything go as far as, as a cluster design, which is what you guys provided. Mm -hmm. um, so, it, so were you able to um, <coughs> provide the, um, the adaptations uh, for the standards committee to consider inspired, or how, how, did you, how are you dealing with um, those adaptions, or the the, uh, the engineering changes you had to make on the standard products to, to fit them in this mold. Um, is that IP that you're also giving to the community to um, to learn from? Yeah, that's my understanding is that we're, we're going to have OSP inspired branding where that's what we're striving for. So the hope is that we submit it for Q2 and then the community just use that as a reference point and it'll be on the marketplace so everybody can use it. So it's something we want to share to everybody. Uh, as we go forward. So from the power supply point of view, what standardization are you asking for? Or like, uh, uh, what kind of, are you asking for ACDC? What, what, what's the standardization you, were, you hope to see? Oh, um, Alex, uh, do you happen to know this one, the power? Um, what kind of standardization do we want for the Tundra ES and in general for OCP racks? Uh, yeah, he's asking for what standard. Is it DC, AC? Uh, what do you like to see in the form factor? Those kind of things. So the question is about the, the, the power um, spec for the uh, Tundra, Tundra rig or the device. For the rack, um, by, by default, we have an AC to DC converter. However, in our latest design, we can also provide, well, two AC uh, convenience outlets in case we cannot really find a, a 12 volt DC equipment for the 19 inch device. So for the DC uh, spec, we have a standard 20A, 277, even for the international rating uh, 230. Does that answer the question? Um, does it, it does? Okay. Thank you. Uh, I know I had a short presentation. Does anybody have any other questions? Um. Yeah, I, I've got one more. Mm -hmm. um, so you said that there's a, an adapter for the switch. You couldn't find an adapter for the switch. What kind of adapter were you looking for? Oh, it was the, uh, let me see if I can find the slide here. Was it for the networking or power or, or what? It's actually for the power itself. So uh, as mentioned here, we have a, uh, a PDB and we had adapted for DC in this, right. in this case. And we basically took out two of these PDBs here and replaced it with the password. And then here in the Arctica, it was pretty similar except that we had a modular power supply. Right. And we changed it out to a, a DC type. Just a pass-through then. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So when you did that conversion, so you didn't run into any of the uh, problems with the monitoring circuitry that 
was looking for power good and then oh. <laughs> making sure those supplies were okay. I mean, how did, uh, what challenges did you face there? Um, results. Alex, do you happen to know this one about the, uh, the challenges on the power supply for the DC conversion? The, the power conversion for the DC power supply when we created it for the Arctica? Is there a question about the conversion uh, efficiency or? Not the conversion efficiency, but a lot of these uh, components have uh, monitors on them to make sure that power is good. And, oh, yeah. And these type of uh, other electronic sen uh, <clears throat> sensory uh, on, the, on the power line in as a you know, first level diagnostics. Did you run into any of, of, of those? Uh, uh, did you have to interface with any of that circuitry uh, when you created this? Uh, or was it mod was this design of these module enough that that you were able to do it without uh, uh, these these safeguard? Uh. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Um, for uh, for those existing models, uh, because they uh, will utilize uh, the design, uh, so uh, the Howard mounting function is actually handled by probably by the CPOD uh, of the switches. So we didn't really change the uh, the whole circuit distribution a lot but definitely work with the original um, manufacturer and work with their how engineering team to make sure it will not break the the um, the ball or anything. Moving forward for the new models, uh, we might um, move on that work from CPLD to BNC, um, but theoretically um, using the DC power will not change a lot. Yeah, basically, you just need to find the right um, solution uh, for you, and also, but there will be some additional certification works. Yeah. Right. Um, anything else? Thank you, John. Yeah, thank you.